Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First and four, we're tracking some storms once again this afternoon. Now we could see isolated downpours and winds of 50 miles per hour, depending on how things develop. For the latest, let's bring in Ben Bailey on what we can expect. Karen, severe risk for parts of the area right now. This is mainly north of eight mile and that green shaded area is a marginal risk. That's the lowest on the scale. And this is really just for about the next couple hours. There's some ingredients that are coming together there that could make some of these storms a little bit stronger than what we're expecting later on in the evening. But already we're seeing more of this than we did yesterday. And this line right now uh, is some of the strongest stuff that we're seeing. And that's in the northern part of Genesee County heading towards Flint. Notice that these are not moving very fast to the southeast at about 15 miles an hour. Uh, so pretty much the areas that are seeing that rain are going to be seeing it here shortly. Uh, Davison, you'll be seeing it by 425 flushing at about 415. And this is some of the area that has picked up most of the rain that we have seen over the last several days. New drought monitors out. We'll look at that. We'll also tell you where these thunderstorms are going to be developing for the rest of the evening. Don't forget, you can get weather alerts right on your phone at our local forecasters app. Download for free in your app store by searching WDIV. Karen. All right, thank you, Ben. Well, we didn't expect Al Brooks Patterson to hold back today as he discussed the growing battle for business between Oakland County and the city of Detroit. The county executive is known for his blunt style. He's been critical of some Metro Detroit CEOs who are working to bring business to the city. So when he was asked if Oakland County should join that group, listen closely to his response. Oh, hell no. <laughs> I'd rather join the Klan. Uh, no, they're, they're not... Uh... They're not working with us or they're not working for us. Uh, we are a direct competitor. Business editor Rod Maloney was there as Patterson made that comment. Now he's gathering a reaction right now and we'll be taking a closer look at the growing competition as what it means for all of us. A man was found dead in the street early this morning. It happened on Detroit's west side. It was about 3.30 in the morning in the area of Rutherford and Plymouth Roads. That's where the body was found with a broken leg and head trauma. Officers believe the man may have been thrown from a vehicle or perhaps involved in a hit and run. No gunshot or stab wounds were reported. Police are investigating and asking if you have information to call them. The massive cleanup operation continues on Belle Isle today after Monday's thunderstorms left really quite a mess. The storms came in fast and hit hard, leaving tree limbs everywhere. A large group of people from all over the state are helping to fix the damage. These crews face the tedious job of getting rid of all the tree parts and debris left behind. The goal is to get Belle Isle back in tip-top shape for the weekend. The Trump administration is preparing to launch a new branch of the U.S. military. You may have heard about the so-called Space Force. The administration says it's about our national interests, but some critics very simply call the idea dumb. Devin Skillian joins us now, and Devin, the Trump administration wants to move quickly on this. Uh, they certainly do, Karen. They are talking about a very short timetable to make a Space Force a reality. Today, the Vice President Mike Pence unveiled more details and explained why his boss, President Trump, wants America to own outer space. Vice President calls outer space the next battlefield, where we need to protect the many American satellites orbiting the Earth. We rely on those satellites for communication, navigation, and intelligence that's used by the U.S. military. Intelligence agents report Russia and China are pursuing anti-satellite weapons for use during a possible future war. A cyber attack could, of course, cripple our military. And on the flip side, critics say the Air Force is already doing the work, and adding more bureaucracy will just be a waste of money. Well, I certainly still stand by my dumb idea comment. I would have hoped he would have waited a few more years to get a little bit more educated on what our military capabilities currently are and what the threats are out there. As their actions make clear, our adversaries have transformed space into a warfighting domain already. And the United States will not shrink from this challenge. Yeah, the vice president says uh, they'd like to see the Space Force as its own branch of the U.S. military by the year 2020, but the White House cannot do that uh, on their own. They'll need uh, congressional approval, so we'll have to wait and see if the House and Senate uh, like the idea. Ambitious. We'll see more mm -hmm. coming up. Most Care definitely. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Devin. You bet. First of four, we're tracking other stories making headlines across America this Thursday afternoon. Let's go to Virginia, where a 17-month-old toddler died after being left alone in a hot car. Police say the little boy's father was supposed to drop him off at daycare yesterday morning, but when the toddler didn't show up, the daycare called the boy's mother, 
who then called 911. Three hours later, the little boy was discovered dead in his car seat in his father's parked car. Authorities estimate the temperature inside the car was in excess of 120 degrees. So far, the father is not facing charges. The investigation continues. Moving to Arizona, a man is being called a hero after helping two teens who were struck by lightning. Witnesses say the day started pretty nice, but storms quickly rolled in. Two 13-year-old boys were out playing in the middle of a field when they were both struck by lightning. An unidentified man who was at the park with his family ran over and then began performing CPR. Police say both boys are in stable condition this afternoon. Rising tariffs on U.S. exports are starting to negatively impact dairy farmers. While a record amount of cheese is being produced, tariffs have drastically reduced overseas sales. So nearly 1.4 billion pounds of cheese, well, it's currently sitting in refrigeration. Part of the issue, cows are producing more milk than ever, so dairy farmers turn to global markets. Mexico used to receive a quarter of U.S. dairy exports. However, both countries have put up to 25% tariffs on cheese, slowing down trade. Right now, there is a massive blood drive for the American Red Cross happening at Little Caesars Arena. The Red Cross is teaming up with the Pistons and the Wings, hoping to get more donors because it's so low on blood. It is an emergency situation, and as Nick Monticelli reports, donors are being offered some extra incentives that might sound pretty good to you. To be honest with you, we have covered a lot of blood drives, and never is it this busy right off the bat. So that means there's good things happening. Either people really like the incentives, or they're realizing what an emergency this is. Or maybe both. Or I make a tight fist and hold it. If you happen to be a regular donor for the American Red Cross, there's a good chance. Do you need my card? You may have run into Kathy Ortez. She has been donating blood for 30 years. It's so easy to do. It's not really, it's pain free and you're helping people. That's what it's all about, helping people. But today at Little Caesars Arena, there's another incentive. The District of Detroit, the Red Wings and the Pistons are giving away preseason game tickets, gear, prize packs and more, which should draw even more people in. Um, I hope so. Um, I got, I got a Dylan. I got a Dylan Larkin bobblehead, so, you know, it was great. We used to do this up north at the Palace with just the Pistons in the Palace. Now you've got all four teams behind it, and what a great opportunity for us to work together to do great things in the city of Detroit. This is happening because if you pay attention to the news, you may have heard the American Red Cross has an emergency on its hands, less than a five-day supply of blood. It happens during the summer because donors are gone and drives at schools and businesses are in scheduled. If we get below a five day supply, we get scared. And so if we get below that five day supply, what's going to happen? Hospitals will have to start calling patients and rescheduling elective surgeries. So today is about getting that blood, saving lives, and getting something a little extra too. Free season Lions tickets. I give whether there's incentives or not, you know. Um, it just it makes me feel good and I know I'm helping people. So again, just a reminder, the blood drive is going on right now. You can come up until 8 o'clock. You can see Caroline if you want. She's very excited to see you. We're here at Little Caesars Arena. Nick Monticelli, first at four. Now, most people are pre-registered to donate at LCA, but they are accepting walk-ins at the door open till 8. Still ahead, first at four, could your smartphone be too smart? One company is trying to convince Congress and its customers you have nothing to worry about when it comes to privacy. Also ahead, one wife's crusade against UPS. Delivery drivers don't have something many of us take for granted on those hot summer days. We'll explain. And remember the former Stanford swimmer convicted of sexual assault. Brock Turner wanted a new trial, even though he only served three months. We have the court's decision.